Hey guys, uh, it's Daniel here. Listen, Chewie's not here right now. He's feeling a little uh, under the weather. Well, not really. He uh, he doesn't really have a disease. He uh, he has a parasite. Now we're gonna take him to the doctor's office eventually, but not right now because you know that would make a very interesting video. But he's gonna be here soon. So what we're gonna do is try and guess the parasite he has. Now, he's super embarrassed about it, he doesn't really want to talk about it, but he is also an obnoxious biology major who just got done with a parasitology course. And being as obnoxious as he is, he's going to want to show off all that knowledge that he just obtained. So, he's going to be talking about the life cycle of this parasite, how you get this parasite, the symptoms it causes, uh, where you find them, all that cool stuff. But, uh... He's not going to actually tell you what it is because, like I said, that's it's kind of embarrassing. Anyway, all we need you guys to do is sit back, relax, have a good time, and, you know, try and guess what he has. Oh, oh, here he comes. Oh, um, hello. It's you guys. Um, listen, you know, I really don't, um, I don't feel like doing a video today. And actually, I, I kind of have, um, I kind of have an appointment I have to get to. So I'm just going to run along and, um, I'll see you guys later. All right? Okay. <laughs> Bye. Hey, buddy, what's the rush? Listen, we got plenty of time. We still got two hours before your, uh, you know, thing. Uh, why don't we sit here, make the video now, and we'll still have plenty of time to get to, you know, wherever we're going, right? Well, listen, um, I'd really rather not right now. You're gonna make this video when you're gonna make it right now, and it's gonna be hilarious. Now, I need you to look into this camera and tell these people the symptoms you're experiencing right now. Oh, oh, um, oh, uh, all right, well, um, well, folks, there's only two, um, real symptoms. Um, the first is there's a general, um, itching in my, uh, in my, in my genital area. My, my, my swimsuit area. That and there is a, uh, there are visible, uh, what are called nits, uh, in my pubic hair. Yes, those are the symptoms. I have itching and, uh, nits in my pubic hair. Yes, that's it. Now, you, uh, you mentioned nits. Uh, what exactly is a nit? Oh, um, a nit. Well, you see, the, uh, the... The problem I have, it has, uh, it has three stages in its life cycle. There's, uh, the nit, which is basically the egg of the, uh, problem. And then there is the, uh, what's called the nymph, which is like a baby version of the problem. And then the nymph eventually grows into the adult. Okay, and, um, how long does this process take? Well, the, uh, nits take about one week to grow into a nymph after hatching, and the nymphs take about another week to turn into an adult. The total lifespan of my, um, problem is, uh, it's a little less than a month. And, uh, the female problems, they, uh, they lay about 30 eggs total apiece during their lifetime, so obviously there's a great potential for exponential multiplication. However, it's important to remember that uh, if my problem is removed, they uh, will die within 24 to 48 hours. Well, you've told us a lot about them. You've told us that they have three stages in their life cycle. The nit, which is the egg, the nymph, which is the young adult, and then the adult itself, and that there's about a week between the nit and the nymph, and the nymph and the adult, 
You've also told us there's a lifespan of about 30 days, and they usually, the females produce about 30 eggs each. Uh, what else have you told us? Oh yes, the symptoms of genital itching. But something you haven't told us that I'm kind of curious about, um, what do these things look like? Well, they're, uh, they're fairly small. They're about 1.25 millimeters to 2 millimeters in size, in length. And, uh, they're gray in color, although, while being identified under a light microscope, they can appear transparent because of their incredibly small size. Also, as the females are charged with reproductive capacities, they tend to be larger than the male counterparts. So basically, what you're telling everyone is, uh, you got crabs. What? 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 Why, I, I never, no, no, I don't have crabs, no, 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 no. What the very thoughts, I, I would, I don't, how did you, why would you, I, I, I. Uh, sorry, dude, I'm reading it right here, and that's what it says. <laughs> It says a few other things, too, that you forgot. Like, uh, usually you acquire it through sexual contact. I don't know how or why you would do that, but, you know, that's your prerogative. Of course, it isn't always through sexual contact. It could also be through shared bath towels or clothing, which neither of which you use, but that's fine, too. But hey, it's not always in your genitals either, I mean, or in your pubic hair, rather, I should say. It's, it can also be found in armpit hair, mustache hair, beard, eyebrows and eyelashes, none of which you have, but still, you know, there's the possibility. Um, hmm. Well, you're a pretty freaky doll, aren't you? Listen, um, I don't want to talk about it, all right? Let's just go to the doctor's appointment and, uh, you know, get treated, okay? Well, it says here that treatment for pubic lice was actually originally created by Dr. Elijah P. Hanning, who found that pubic lice were easily treated with a 1% permethean or pyrethrin lice shampoo. But, in order to get rid of all the nits, the eggs, you have to actually comb through the pubic hair with a fine-tooth comb, or, which I'm sure you would prefer, just shave all the hair off. You're a freaky man, Mr. Chewy.